In this video, we are going to talk about clustered scheduled tasks. Clustered scheduled tasks were a new feature in Windows Server 2012 and they remain the same in Windows Server 2012 R2. These are basically normal scheduled tasks, but with the difference that they are cluster aware and they are controlled by the cluster. These tasks are managed with a PowerShell with some special commandlets that are different from the normal scheduled task commandlets. And when you run such a task, you can only run it with the local system account. You cannot use another user or service account to run uh, the task as it. There are three types of cluster scheduled uh, task and these types actually define the scope on which they run. First is any node and this type of scheduled task runs on one of the cluster nodes and the cluster chooses that node when you create the task. So you can use this type of task for general cluster actions like uh, generating reports or stuff like that, uh, which are not dependent on the actual node on which the task runs. The next type is the cluster wide task. And uh, this type of scheduled task will run on every node of the cluster. When you create it, it is created on all nodes and enabled on all nodes. And the last type is resource specific. And this type of task is linked to a cluster resource. If you have, for example, a uh, file server role, you can link the task to that role and on whichever node the role is being placed, the task will move with it and run only on that node. Let's uh, try a couple of examples and see how to configure scheduled tasks and use them in a cluster. I made three uh, very simple scripts that we will use to run uh, in the scheduled tasks for each uh, type of scheduled task. And uh, each script will actually create a text file on C with the scheduled task type. So we know which one ran. And now we just have to copy these scripts somewhere that the cluster nodes have access to them. The one and three scripts, I will put them on both nodes on uh, C. So this is one way that you can uh, uh, put uh, different programs and stuff that you run in your scheduled task. And the second one, the script two, we will try to put it on the cluster storage since this is also a storage that the cluster always accesses. All nodes can access every time. And now to actually create the scheduled task, we have to go on one of the cluster nodes. This is because when you create a scheduled task in a cluster, you have to create it on all the nodes. And if I were to use PowerShell remoting, I could not because of the Active Directory to hop limitation. I'm on the A node of the cluster and we can start now to configure the scheduled tasks. First thing I want to do is configure the free actions for the free tasks. So my tasks will actually run the bat scripts that we just copied from their respective locations. And I have to also set a trigger, which will not matter in our case because we can run the tasks manually, but in a production environment, you have to have a trigger, I guess. And with these two items set, we can go ahead and actually create our tasks. And this is how it's done. This is the command that we use. We have to specify the cluster, task name, the task type, and these are the three types that uh, you can choose from. The action, the trigger, and for the resource specific task, we also specify the resource that it is tied to. And uh, here you go, we created the three tasks. We can get a list of these tasks uh, 
with this commandlet and here you go but we can also get a list of the of the tasks with the normal scheduled tasks commandlets and you will see that uh, this is a little more interesting because it shows us also the state of the task and you see that on the A node of the cluster, the any node and resource are disabled and the cluster is ready, so it's enabled. This means that for the any node type task, the cluster chose node B to be the one that holds it. So on node B, it should uh, be ready and we can check right now. You see that these two are ready and here they are disabled so this one runs on b the cluster wide task runs on every node of the cluster so it's normal that it's ready on both of them and the resource it seems that it's disabled on node a and enabled on node b which means that our uh, scale out the file server is on node b and we can quickly check this with get cluster group fs01 sofs is owned by node b okay so let's continue let's exit from node b let's try now to run one of the scheduled tasks and uh, since we are on the a node again the only one we can test on this one is the cluster task and now we should have a text file on the c drive and we do so the task ran and it should have worked let's see what it contains and it contains the user that the task runs as which i told you it's a system and you cannot change it Let's try now moving the uh, F, uh, FSO1 SOFS group to the A node. So we put here node A. And if we get now a list of the scheduled tasks again, if everything worked correctly, now it should be ready. The resource one should be in the ready state on this node. And you see that it is so when you move uh, the resource the task gets now disabled on b and enabled on a and vice versa and uh, yeah one more thing of course you can also remove scheduled tasks if you're not happy with them if you want to change them or something with unregistered scheduled uh, uh, clustered scheduled task and uh, you see for example I will remove any node and I'm on the A node. If I run the command and now I get a list of scheduled tasks, any node is not on A, but you will see that it's deleted also from B. As you can see. So this was a quick look at clustered scheduled tasks. I think it's a very interesting feature and uh, very useful in some uh, occasions if you liked the video please leave a like and share it also consider subscribing and i will see you in the next one